test the microphones. I'm hot. Are you hot over there with the microphone? This is when you speak words. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and now we are fading. I think there's a bit of a delay between the two of us. That's fair. That's fair. That's what we're here for, uh, to make sure that gets all this worked out. And we are live on camera. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, children of all ages, welcome to the 71st episode of the Old Humble Distilling Company's Quarantine Cocktail Happy Hour. Uh, cue the uh, air horns and confetti. Uh, we'll add all that in post. Uh, <laughs> I am here with the <laughs> blogging banshee on my right, and God, I have so many shadows in this room. I, I really need to get this lighting under control. Molly, <laughs> say hi to everybody here in the interwebs. Hello, everyone. <laughs> There's, there. She's she, <laughs> okay. So we figured this out. She's in Oregon. There's a delay. <laughs> That's got to be what it is. Yeah. It's uh, it's got to be the delay. Yeah, I don't know what's going on, but there's definitely a little bit of a delay between when you talk and when I talk. Yeah, it's, it's, it's got to go over the mountains and through that valley, then over the next mountains, and then it winds in yeah. between the trees, <laughs> winds up at your place, and then you got to send it back to the satellites and around Mars. Oh, now it looks stuff. like it's frozen. I'm not entirely again. sure where Oregon is, but you know, we have an idea. I've seen maps. <laughs> Uh, so our cocktail for the night is uh, our straight, our special reserve whiskey. You over there, Molly, are drinking a... I, I am having a Moscow Mule out of my Creature from the Black Lagoon tiki mug. Fantastic. Fantastic. Well, cheers to you. Um, looking forward to this. This is going to be a fun conversation. Uh, so you have a Creature of the Black Lagoon tiki mug. Which actually leads perfectly yes. into the first question of, so who are you and why are you here? <laughs> you're a you're a, a <laughs> you're a blogger for you're you're a horror film well not just a horror film blogger you're, I guess you're a horror film enthusiast, but you're a film blogger writer script read yeah. etc. And according to your yep, bio, I, um, it was I've been a horror. Yeah, I'm sorry. I stepped on your lines. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No. <laughs> no. Oh. Um, I, this actually might be what you were about to say. I've been a horror film fan since I was uh, five mm -hmm. when my sister forced me to watch A Nightmare on Elm Street with her. Which is a, <laughs> an awesome Which is story. really, oh no, I was four. Sorry. Yeah, but that's an awesome story. Yeah, your sister forces yeah. <laughs> you to watch Nightmare on Elm Street and all of a sudden, instead of turning you off to horror film yeah. forever, it turns you on to horror films and it like launches you into the entire... Well, I mean, you're, you're four at the time. Like, that's what I want to be when I grow up. <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk about these things. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it definitely traumatized me as a kid. I, I was absolutely terrified. Um, but it it definitely had me interested enough that now it's, I, in 2015, started my own website, the bloggingbanshee.com, where I started writing horror film reviews. Mm -hmm. um, and then... Three years ago, I think, I started contributing to other websites as well, uh, writing reviews or the listicles. Yeah. I think that's a weird word, but listicles yeah, it's a <laughs> for very, horror films. A very um, modern internet other... type of thing to have listicles. Like, Ten things you need to know about the next yeah. horror film genre. Yeah, it explosion. definitely is. <laughs> Number seven will blow your mind. Number seven never blows your mind. Never <laughs> yeah, number it's, seven. It's always number six. It's definitely, it's an interesting... <laughs> idea but um so yeah i mean i've been doing that for a while i'm tomato meter approved film critic and stuff um so if you see that meter score for horror films depending on what it is i may have contributed to that score <laughs> so don't blame me if you see something that i gave a good score for and you don't like it um but <laughs> i'm always skeptical uh, and then i also tomato meter have started doing other things how how easily are those tomato meter scores yeah, manipulated Um, I mean, for the critics, they're they're not okay. easily manipulated. I think it can be a little misleading, though, because, like, say something has an a hundred percent on Rotten Tomatoes, that doesn't mean everyone gave it a ten out of ten. Mm -hmm. That just means all the film critics that have reviewed it gave it a fresh rating. Which, depending on who they are, like on my scale, if it's like a 5.5 or six or higher out of 10, I give it a fresh rating. Gotcha. Um, so it, 
it varies a little bit, but it generally just means that everyone liked it, not necessarily that it's a perfect film. So it's a little misleading, but, um, and luckily they've made it harder for the audience scores to not be manipulated Mm -hmm. um, because you have a lot of going on there (laughs) and trying to trash films that they didn't even watch just just because they don't like the idea of it. Yeah. Um, But now they've, I believe they've made it so you have to like prove that you actually watched the film. How do you um, prove that you watched the film? Which is a nice thing that they did. Put the UPC code of your... uh, Um, I mean, I think these days a lot of things like e-tickets. Okay. Yeah, it's because I think a lot of times people buy it through Fandango Mm -hmm. and Fandango is connected to Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, cool. Okay. Um, So I think that makes it a little easier. Nice little ecosystem they built for themselves over there. Um, Yes. (laughs) I think that really started after the the newest Black Christmas. There were a lot of guys angry about that film for no reason Hmm. and trying to bomb it without actually seeing it. Um, So I think Rotten Tomatoes finally realized that they needed to find a better system. Yeah, And I guess with the ease of being able to uh, jump onto a system and give a, you know, the ease of access to be able to create bot networks and create clones one person can can create a script, a multi-click, uh, whatever the thumbs down for the equivalent of a thumbs down would be. Uh, and if you can create yeah, a little network, sure. you can, yeah, you can do all that sort of stuff. I don't know how to do that sort of stuff. And if I did, I sure as hell would give myself a lot of up thumbs. <laughs> I don't either. Is that a word? For, is that a word? Thumb, thumbs ups is. Babe, that's not plural. <laughs> Shit, I don't know. <laughs> thumbs ups is, yeah. English is hard. <laughs> I'm not yes. exactly somebody yes, that, can we. <laughs> that pedals in the English language. Uh, unlike you, you do writing and stuff. You're, uh, you know, you're you that that's your craft. You do the blog. You do reads. Uh, uh, I mean, yeah. Uh, what what is your most recent most favorite horror movie to watch? <laughs> most recent. Uh huh that i really loved was probably um oh man that's hard yeah i mean the first one that comes to mind is like i loved the new invisible man the new um, invisible man. i loved that was the one... dr sleep i thought that was the, the new invisible man was the one where the guy was uh accused of murder no where he was stalking his wife from beyond the dead is that the one it's not from Beyond the Dead, but yes, okay. it is. It's like an abusive relationship, and he, um, yeah, it's really, really good. Elizabeth yeah. Moss is amazing in everything that she does, so gotcha. it was that, guaranteed to be good. That's one that I wanted to watch that I haven't pulled the trigger on. I, I remember seeing the, the. I mean, it, 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 those types of thrillers that it's like uh, man's in, inhumanity. God dang, English words coming out of my face or challenge right now. <laughs> Uh, man's inhumanity to man, but even worse, that that movie in particular, it was compounded that nobody believed her. Like it was like she's completely being gaslighted yeah. by everybody, uh, and that it looked so fascinating. And I've, I haven't had a chance to pull the trigger and actually watch that one yet, uh, but it's definitely on the list. Oh my god, that's a good one. Uh, okay, what else? <laughs> Give me a list of stuff to do over the weekend so that I can watch uh, watch some movies later this week. <laughs> but i don't want to i i absolutely love that one okay uh that one you froze again uh that one being invisible man uh oh, yeah. okay so here's here's a yes. here's a warning to everybody out there and you uh we had our entire network crash on thursday i think it was thursday it was either thursday or friday like our internet just crashed all and through oh. my whole neighborhood like 200 houses and we were we were stuck in it we were pre-stone age because we didn't have like tv uh and i'm watching my internet connection over here it's like running <laughs> real slow um but we're 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 maintaining there's video audio is still coming through you're freezing a little bit that's probably why i'm freezing on your end is because this internet connection is garbage right now uh but that's okay we're working our way through it yeah. this would be awesome we have drinks we can talk it's cool um okay so invisible man what was what was one more <laughs> yeah <laughs> you lost me uh invisible I man came out last year but i oh. yeah, invisible man and then one more oh. <laughs> dr sleep dr sleep 
Did it come through that time? No. Nope. No. Nope. Doctor what? This is Doctor this is a slate. Okay, hang on one second. We're gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna do one quick thing over on my end. We're gonna go to a quick sixty second we're a sixty second ad break and then we'll be right back. Uh, is your bar looking a little ordinary? Is it lacking something awesome? Well, head out to your local liquor store and pick up something extraordinary. extraordinary. Grab a bottle of Old Umble Straight Whiskey or Old Umble Special Reserve. They're clean, smooth, easy drinking whiskeys that taste the way whiskey should taste. From humble beginnings to an extraordinary finish, Old Umble Whiskeys are what your bar needs today. Walk tall, be awesome, and, and drink humble. Old Umble Straight Whiskey and Old Umble Special Reserve. Get yours today. So it was kind of nice. Uh, so I have, how many do I have now? I think I have like eight that are at least almost like at the final stage that they need to be at. And I have a couple more ideas that I'm gonna work on. Um, and then I'm in the very, very, very early stages. I want to emphasize that. Very early <laughs> stages of a screenplay um, that I'm going to be doing. I've only started the research part because it's actually, I'm loosely basing it on one of my relatives. Mm -hmm. um, so, but it's going to be horror, of course. Gotcha. <laughs> but very loosely based on my, one of my relatives. So I've been doing a ton of research and using like Ancestry.com and going through like newspaper clippings online and stuff like that. Neat. So. Neat. Well, I have a, a minor confession to make. The beginning of that uh, return from the ad break was muted because mm -hmm. uh, I forgot to turn the microphones <laughs> back on. So they didn't hear about the anthology of stories and you're getting your master's degree and, or you got your master's degree in writing and that your homework turned into an anthology that you're working on and almost done with, but they know about it now. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but they did hear about the screenplay, so that's cool. Um, okay, good. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's cool. Uh, and I'll, I'll fix that. I'll try to fix that. I'll do something about that in uh, what I call post, but really it's not post. I just say that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll trim that out. We'll put in a, a cat gif or something. Is it a gif or a gif? What do you think? Is it a gif or a gif? I say gif. GIF. I think GIF is weird. Yeah, GIF is peanut butter. It's definitely yeah, exactly. -F -F is definitely <laughs> peanut butter. And GIF is, I mean, it's a graphic inter interactive file, right? Yeah. Isn't that what it is? Yeah. G it is I G think so. G is the graphic, so it should be GIF. And, mm -hmm. I, and I realized that I've never really thought about it very hard, but when I said it out loud, it was GIF. So it's obviously GIF, and everybody else is wrong. Yeah. Take that. I agree. So we're good. Take that world. <laughs> <laughs> uh when i was looking around uh for stuff to talk to you about uh i saw you did uh you've done script reads uh your pinned post yes. in your twitter uh by the way all of her links and stuff are down below in the uh description you'll find her all of her link tree stuff for twitter or socials all the things down there uh but I'm, I'm sure i can trick her into mentioning that stuff later too um but, <laughs> but you did a script read of jennifer's jennifer's body right yeah yes. jennifer's body yep. i said heather's body earlier <laughs> and that was wrong <laughs> i mean there is a movie called heather's yes, but which is a great movie. movie an absolutely yes. fantastic movie from the 80s late 80s early yep. 90s uh featuring a young um uh a young and damn his name just like just escaped me christian slater christian slater yeah young christian slater uh and uh i want to say molly ringwald but she wasn't in that movie no, Winona Ryder. Winona, that's the one. Winona Ryder. Um, and Shannon Doherty was in yeah, it too. And to this day, when Winona Ryder is in a movie, uh, I ask my wife, is that Winona Ryder? Because she still <laughs> is iconic enough. Her voice is iconic enough. You can identify her from across the room without even looking at it. Uh, but it's become a running joke in the household because she was in some movie and you know it was Winona Ryder. Like, is that Winona Ryder? And now it's a it's funnier in the house, trust me. Um, yeah. <laughs> I get that look from my wife, uh, which is always worth it. Always, absolutely, always worth it. Um, but yeah, that's a that by itself is a fantastic movie, and it is home to so many lines that people today repeat and don't know it's from Heather's. Uh, yeah, which is just great. Uh, it's just the best. <laughs> um, but anyway, not Heather's body, Jennifer's body. Yes. Uh, which is a very okay. So the first time I watched Jennifer's body, it was. I thought it was really weird and really 
it was it, it was interesting and fun. It ha- it stars Heather, uh, not Heather, uh, Megan Fox. <laughs> yes. And uh, Amanda Seyfried. Uh, yeah, Amanda. Se- I was going to say generic blonde, but it's not generic blonde. It's actually somebody who's <laughs> a real a real actress, but she's made to look like a generic blonde because they do mm-hmm. the they do the movie thing with uh, pretty girls to make them not be pretty. Uh, they give her a ponytail and glasses, and now she's. Yeah. No longer Amanda Seyfried, she's uh, generic blonde. Uh, <laughs> cheap movie tricks. Uh, but she's uh, Amanda next to Megan Fox. And like the whole premise of it, the like the band, okay, spoilers alert, whatever. Uh, band is trying, makes a deal with the devil or trying to make a deal with the devil by sacrificing a virgin, but they, they screw it all up and there's a fire at the club or something and it's just... Like there's so many, I've I've got I I really like watching thriller, psycho thriller type of movies and even the cheesy horror movies. I like watching those, but I have trouble watching cheesy horror movies that are done with a big budget and try to take themselves seriously. And this movie seemed to me like a cheesy movie that was trying to take itself ser- more seriously than it should have taken itself. But I can also appreciate that it was just like just kind of dumb fun at the same time. And what, what do you think about this movie? You know, you, I mean, you, I absolutely you've seen it more it. than me. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I played Jennifer in the script read. So okay. I have, I actually, it's funny. I almost wore a shirt today that said <laughs> justice for Jennifer's body. <laughs> like I was this close and then I changed my mind. Right. Um, but I, I mean, I love the film. I think that it suffered from really poor marketing when it came out. It advertised it as a very different movie than what it actually was. Okay. Um, and I think it suffered from, I, I hate to say it, I, I think it suffered from toxic masculinity a bit. Very much so, <laughs> um, yeah. Because Megan Fox already had a bad reputation at this point, I feel like. Yeah. Um, unjustly had a bad reputation. Mm-hmm. And so people saw, I mean, I, I'll admit when it first came out, I think I can't remember when it came out. I may have still been in high school. I'm not sure. Um, but when it first came out, I even was like, oh, Megan Fox is in it. I don't want to watch that. Um, <laughs> but it's because like this whole toxicity that's in the film industry and like because one person, one dude talks shit about her, then yeah. <laughs> it and automatically she, meant she was bad. And, and to be fair, she did not get the, she did not get the type of, uh, 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 latitude or respect for her acting that she should have gotten in Transformers. The way they and that was like her breakout role, like Megan yeah. Fox in Transformers. And then she that's when she became Megan Fox. Uh, but certainly in the the first step, the first movie of Transformers, she was used more for screen candy than for her acting. And then yeah. in the second movie, it was here's three scenes of Megan Fox running and. Uh, we're going to toss her aside and not use her anymore. Um, yeah. <laughs> and honestly, it's it's and, funny. I was she's talking a about actress this film. Than that is what I'm, yeah. what I'm trying oh. to say. She's a much better actress than that. She just wasn't used uh, for her acting skill in, in yeah. the Transformers movies. And it's, I feel like, I mean, the film, I don't think it's as serious as a lot of people make it out to be. Like, it's, it's supposed to be satirical in a lot of ways. Yeah. Um, it's like, Obviously, it's comedy. It's written by Diablo Cody. <laughs> like it's it's gonna be, um, but I think it's definitely. I think part of the problem too, which it's not a problem for me, but for a lot of people, is that it's a horror film, horror comedy satire geared towards women, mm. and I feel like that's where it kind of gets lost in the shuffle a little bit too, because I feel not as much now. It's getting a little bit better, but even then, when it was like. 15 years ago or whenever this movie came out um stuff that was geared towards women was generally looked down upon um and i it's funny if you look at the film it's what's hap- happened to jennifer in the film is almost what happened to megan fox mm-hmm. um like she was used to to get to she was used for somebody else's fame yeah she was used for somebody else's fame and then discarded and then because she wasn't like the virgin, then she became an evil demon. Like, right. I mean, that's essentially what happened to her in real life. And it's like, 
her, I'm not saying she should have been killing all those boys, but I also don't blame her for killing all of those boys. <laughs> I, I mean, <laughs> they, knew what they, were, they knew what they were I, getting into. They shouldn't have dressed probably, like that if they didn't want it to happen. <laughs> like I, I probably would have killed them in her position too. So yeah, that's fair. That's fair. You see the, what I, I guess when I look at it, it's when did that movie come out? It's, I'm going to look it up right now. Like, Cause I first, I swear to God, I first saw it like three months ago on, I think Hulu or Amazon prime. Uh, I found mm-hmm. it here. I didn't, I hadn't heard of the movie. And when I saw it, it, it is older than I expected it to be. It's, it's early to... It's 2009. Okay, I was, I was thinking early 20-teens. Uh, 2009 would be the end. Yeah, that's in that neighborhood. Um, but it was like a... a yeah, I, I, I had no idea that this movie existed. I see that it pop up on the... And I, it was probably Prime that I saw it. Because I don't go out and I don't do things anymore. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm ever. You know, it's like pop culture is a, a foreign creature to me. And, I, and I'm watching it, and like, I'm I'm watching this movie, and I'm thinking, like the they they had this tragedy at this club that a bunch of high schoolers were going to for one. That's a problem. And then like, you know, two days later, everybody's just moved on. Like the school was open the next day, and like, <laughs> I'm I'm looking at thinking this. There's so many holes that my my logical brain is trying to fill it, and then. And and at that point, I'm just I'm 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 hitting all the speed bumps, and I'm having trouble getting past it. Um, yeah. But but when you when you couch it like that, and and like I, I wasn't looking at it as a movie that was directed geared towards and directed towards women. That's an entirely different voice, and that's a that's a that puts an entirely new light on the movie that I hadn't been looking at it at because obviously I'm a if you hadn't noticed, I'm a guy. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I I try to you know sh- not hide that fact uh, yeah. so that people see it when I'm I'm down the street and they know and they can prepare themselves uh, so that when I when I speak to them they're not surprised that I'm a guy. <laughs> <laughs> not not that I think that has probably ever happened in my entire life, ever. Um, what was I talking about? The movie uh, Jennifer's yes. body, yeah. Um, <laughs> But but when when you can when you can focus back on what what I guess they're trying to to like those types of things um, that that adds a couple of extra layers to it. And when you put it in the in the context of Megan Fox's actual career, that that that's kind of kind of cool and kind of meta. Um, but there's also that whole like like horror movie logic is just weird. Like <laughs> it's just. <laughs> It it like these people are just they just act weird, and you know if I was Megan uh, Heather's friend, uh, whatever her name was, uh, uh, needy, Goody. needy, that's it. Yeah, like you know, just, just put it on a billboard. Like this is this is <laughs> this is a symbol, uh, <laughs> symbolic name. Um, yeah. But uh, if I was her friend, I. Man, you know, you, you see your friend just like show up all covered in blood, and then vomit all over the floor, and then you're just like, "Well, I guess I'll just clean up the vomit." Like, <laughs> no. And then she calls you over to an empty house or whatever, and you're just like, "Yeah, okay, I'll come over and say hi and whatever." Like, no, you don't do that. That's not. No- Is that a normal thing that girls would do? I mean, really? <laughs> um, your friend the comes girls over know. and vomits black, gross goo all over the floor. And then calls you over to an empty house. And you're like, okay, is that a thing? When I are you, you might be the empty house thing. Might be the guy that got called there. Oh yeah, that's right. She called her. She yeah. called that dude to the empty house. The that's right. He but, was the goth dude, the weird. Uh, yes. The weird creepy goth goth dude that had the um, crush which on he didn't know it was an empty house. He thought it was her house until he got there. <sighs> um, okay. Speak- which I have to say that was one of my favorite scenes to act out when I did the live script read. Yeah. And speaking, That's one of my favorite kill scenes. Speaking as a guy, I probably would have gone and gone gone ahead yeah. and gone with it. I mean, if you thought you were going to get laid, why wouldn't you go yeah, in? Yeah, as a if, as a high school guy, if <laughs> if Megan Fox, high school girl Megan Fox would have been like, "Come on in." And I'm looking around like, yep. "Yeah, I'm definitely going to get murdered in a few minutes." <laughs> I'm all right with that. <laughs> I'm gonna go out with a bang. That's cool. Yep. <laughs> I can I can see high school me doing that. Uh, yeah, definitely. Eighty uh, percent <laughs> certain. Certainly eighty yeah. percent certain. 
Um, tell me about your anthologies. Any, any, can you give me any overview of any anthology, a little sneak peek of any of them, like a, an idea of what they're like? Um, I mean, I'm they're, down to buy the book already. <laughs> they're I'm all horror. Old. Okay. <laughs> they're different kinds though. Like I have a little bit of everything. Like I have, um, I have more like thriller slashery kind of thing in there. I have, um, kind of more witchy stuff in there. Uh, uh, cannibal stuff in there <laughs> a little bit of everything um but it's uh, I'm trying to think of something that I can't I, I have like demons and shit in there too <laughs> so it's kind of all around it's not it's not a narrow like you're just writing about vampires this is a, yeah, this, yeah. Is, this is a broad spectrum I mean it, they're short stories they're anthologies but they're not all the same yeah, I think the only thing that's similar between all of them, with the exception of one story, mm -hmm. is that I focus on female characters, um, with the exception of one, mm -hmm. because I focus on the bad guy. <laughs> so it's, <laughs> I gotcha. But I, yeah, I for the most part, I focus on female I characters. I think that's kind of cool. It, it, I was talking about this with another, uh, another horror movie fan uh, a few weeks back that like traditionally all the movies have always been in the voice of the guy. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's always been the white guy uh, who's been like the lead character in the movie. Even if he had the, you know, the black friend or the girlfriend or whatever, even if the girlfriend is the one that saves everybody in the end, it's always through his eyes. Mm -hmm. And there's a whole new crop of directors that are doing movies through the voices, the voices and eyes of the minorities or the women, like Heather's, well, Heather's body is, geez, that's 11 years old. Uh, but but there's more movies like that now than there have been for a long time. And it's not just the female character who's the protagonist, but through the eyes of the boyfriend, or the female mm -hmm. character who's the protagonist through the eyes of the, the bad guy. It's, this is her story, and she's she's doing it, and she's being... She's being written and directed by female directors and female writers, which makes a big difference. And that's that's like a whole new part of the industry that uh, had it seems like it had started to gain a little bit of traction in the 70s and early part of the 80s. And then like the industry just quit trying for yeah. a long time. The industry quit trying. And now it's not like the industry needs to try. It's like these people that had been ignored are just kind of shouldering their way in and saying, look, just give us the same damn budget and the same damn attention and we'll write stories. Yeah. It's, it's funny because um, if you look at all the major like slasher franchises, cause those are some of the biggest earning franchises in mm -hmm. horror or like scream and Halloween and stuff like that. Even uh, the only uh, oh, Nightmare, okay. on, Nightmare on Elm Street. <laughs> yeah. That was Freddy yeah. Krueger and was the bad guy. But the victims were, I mean, the, the, the primary, uh, pro uh, the primary victims were the, the female students at the high school, uh, mm -hmm. and you know, the boyfriends and whatnot, but for at least yeah. for the first movie, it was the chick. <laughs> yeah. But it was, it was and voiced and written through Freddie's eyes. Mm -hmm. And the, like throughout all that, the only slasher franchise that was both written and directed by women are the slumber party massacre films. <laughs> Um, there are three of them. I've only seen the first two. I haven't seen the third one. Wow. Jeez, um, I'm going to have to go find those. They're, I'll check X they're videos first. No. <laughs> they're, they're, they're really fantastic. I actually just wrote an article a couple months ago about the second film. Uh -huh. um, it's this, The first one is more of a straightforward slasher. The second one is almost like if you combine the first one with A Nightmare on Elm Street. Okay. Cause there are like dream aspects to it, but it's, it's wild. Um, but they're amazing. And, but people, I feel like they get slept on. Like I, I grew up with slashers, but I didn't see the first two uh, summer party massacre films until maybe even just a year ago it was the first time I saw them. Like I didn't even know they existed. Okay. Um, but I, they're, I, this is the first time here. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's, you can tell they're written by women too. <laughs> with the exception in the second one there's there's, there's a slumber no, uh, party where there's like it's topless a, girls yeah there's a slumber party with no uh like pillow fights and 
footy pajamas and stuff well, like that because that'd be written by guys. In the second one, it's like that though. Because it's written by guys. <laughs> no, they're all written by women. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's but it's and it's like the the girls like take their tops off for no reason at the slumber party, and I'm like, I've been to a lot of slumber parties, and I don't remember that shit happening. Girls don't do that. Just like gratuitous. No. Like, I'm gonna take this off and I put mean, it over here. <laughs> But so, but in the first one specifically, you can really tell that it's written and directed by women because there's a lot of like symbolic imagery with the weapon that the killer uses and mm -hmm. how he gets defeated. Um, it's very phallic, but in a good empowering way, if that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Yes. Yeah. It's there. Both of them are great. And I, and I've heard that there's, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, Say it, but we're the, oh, you can you can bleep me in post. No, nobody's <laughs> watching. It's fine. Um, <laughs> I've heard. I don't know if it's true, but I've heard that there is like maybe in the third movie there might be like a dildo kill or something like that. Oh, that's worth seeing. Yeah. So I Just I to need see. to watch that. Is I it, need to see what that okay. is. Yeah, because I mean, if it's a sharpened <laughs> dildo, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how that would work, but I want to know. Yeah. Now I'm okay. So we're gonna have to binge watch this. Yeah. God, there's got to be an old humble movie night coming up soon. We need to get internet at the distillery, damn it. Uh, so we can do an old humble movie night and watch Slumber Party Massacre. One, two, and three. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, it would make for a good time, especially if there were drinks involved. There would be drinks and drinking games every time there's yes. a, I don't know, something. We'll, we'll come up with something. Um, <laughs> but, every time the weapon looks like it could be a penis, take a shot. Every time the weapon. Oh, God. There's. <laughs> Okay, so that's another thing that bugs me about uh, about horror movies in general. Not not specifically any one, but in general, the horror movies in general. Like, okay, so the victims are fighting back against the bad guy, right? And they, they do something, they find something that works, right? They've got their weapon, they swing, they hit him with the bat, and it wounds him, and he falls down. And then what do they do with that bat? They drop it and run. Yeah. Like you've just found a weapon that works. You shoot him and it doesn't work. Uh, Chopping Mall was one. Uh, a great cheesy movie from the late 80s. Uh, you know, robots come to life and security robots come to life and kill uh, teenagers. It's great. Um, <laughs> you know, because lightning. What more could you want? Well, lightning strikes the mall. <laughs> and of course, that causes robots to get bloodthirsty because yeah. obviously. Uh, that's how of lightning course. works. Uh, so you know they they do this thing where they like sh they 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 hide behind an an open hallway and shoot a gun that they picked up at the sporting goods store in the mall because that was a thing back in the eighties and they're shooting at it and it's not working. Uh, so they run three steps back and do it some more and run three steps and do it some more and that's not working. Uh, and then they figure out the thing with uh, gas cans and they blow one of the robots up and like ah. Fire and bombs, that works. So then they grab some more guns and shoot at them some more. And <laughs> and you're like you just and it and it's a trope that is repeated constantly in movies, constantly, especially horror flicks and uh slasher movies, you know, they find something that works and they never use it again. Would yeah. would you write a movie like that? I mean, if you had the choice, like see see, I'm one of those Probably not. I'm one of those logical brain people that like <laughs> Like three people would die, and then the fourth person would find out what works, and then they that guy would kill the dude, and then then the, the show yeah. would be over, and it's like thirty minutes long, and everybody's happy. Um. Well, <laughs> and it's funny because we always think that we know better than the people in horror films. Because there, I definitely like I I annoy the shit out of my husband when we watch horror films because I'm always like, oh, I bet you that's gonna happen, and two seconds later it does, and it bugs him so much. But I'm never gonna stop doing that. <laughs> but it's like. But there, you see the patterns and you recognize them and you know what's about to happen. Yeah. yeah. But I feel like we're see like like with um with zombie films and stuff, how there's always that one person who hides the fact that they're they've been bitten, or oh, like boy. there's zombie apocalypse and they should never leave their house, but they do anyways. We're kind of seeing now with COVID that people would in fact do that because yeah. people are dumb as shit. Yeah, I don't <laughs> I, I no longer think that zombie apocalypse movies are unrealistic. <laughs> With regards to people <laughs> going out and go, oh, it's probably going to be safe. I'm just going to go to the grocery store and yeah. get some groceries. I mean, nothing will happen. And then, of course, they get and eaten I, by zombies. But I feel like zombies. with horror films, they're they're updating the tropes. 
yeah. like the the dropping the weapon or like not just going to try to call the cops or whatever like those are some of the old tropes but we're having new tropes where one thing that new horror movies have that bug the crap out of me mm -hmm. is when someone is like says in the movie it's not like we're in a horror movie like that's a new thing that i see all the time i'm like yes in fact you are so stop pretending that you're not right so if, I don't know why it bugs me so much. So, it's like they're crapping on horror movies while it is a horror movie. Well, yeah, and I, th I think it's that kind of sarcastic, like wink and nod, like you know, we're we're trying to break the forms or you know whatever, like you know yeah. the Deadpool uh, uh, superhero tropes that he mocks as he the superhero landing coming up, superhero landing coming up, <laughs> and this is this is impractical. Uh, I just watched Deadpool last night, so. <laughs> The fun one. And because I'm old, it took me three nights to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, honestly, my husband is like that, too. You so know, the, it's it's not just an age thing. <laughs> the kids go to bed. You put the wife to bed. Now it's 10 o'clock. You can catch 30 minutes of a good movie before you start falling asleep. And then you, you just come back the next night. And you watch the next 30 minutes. And, geez, Peter Jackson screwed up movies so badly. Now they're, like, all two and a half hours long. Just Jesus, yeah. guys. I miss the days when they were all 90 minutes. And you could just jump on that movie, 90 minutes. It's a long lunch break. If you need to take a long lunch break, you can watch a whole movie and you're good. Nah, you See, can't do that. you should watch more horror because a majority of horror films are in that 90 minute they are. range. You, you, you can, they fit a nice compact story. They don't need to, to ramble on about silliness and, and do extra endings and, and back fluff and all that stuff. It's just like, there's a bad guy. There's a group of friends. There's the bad girl and the good girl and the dude and the jock and the other guy. And all of them are going to die except for the good girl. And we know this. That's how it's going to be. And yeah. it's going to be 90 minutes and something dumb's going to happen. And they're going to be, the uh, phone lines are going to get cut. They're not going to, they're all going to jump in the car except for the one guy who's going to go back and look for the other dude who got lost. Of and course. then everybody in the car is going to get uh, killed because it's going to run off the road and hit a tree. And then, uh, but one of them's going to get away and get infected with whatever's caused the bad guy to be a bad guy. And then he's going to bring that infection back. And then, uh, there, I just wrote the movie. That's it. Yeah. I, we don't need to, we don't even need to watch that one now. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> that's why, that's actually one of the reasons why I like a lot of newer horror films. I like, there's so many people, even within the horror community, because the horror community for the most part is really great. Mm -hmm. But there are pockets that are still a bunch of douchebags, mm -hmm. <laughs> as with any <laughs> fandom. Um, but there are people who who just dump on any new horror film because it's not something that's familiar to them. It's not the standard 90 minute slasher kind of thing mm -hmm. or like the 80s stuff, which I love those films. But I also am like Dr. Sleep, I think with the extended version is like two and a half hours long. And it's one of the best movies I've ever seen. Yeah. Like I, it's probably my favorite Stephen King adaptation. And anyone who tries to tell me it's not can suck it. Yeah. I think I saw <laughs> Dr. Sleep on either Prime or Hulu, Hulu and Prime are some of the best resources for movies mm -hmm. right now. Uh, Netflix has a lot of a lot of stuff, but they make their own stuff, and a lot of the stuff they make is good, but a lot of the stuff they make is crap. And yeah. uh, you've got to sift through a lot of the crap to get to the good stuff. Uh, but yeah. uh, Hulu and Prime, uh, you know, they buy the studio movies, and they're good. <laughs> and I think I saw Doctor Sleep come up on one of my feeds, uh, and I think I think that's one of the ones I wanted to watch, uh, mm -hmm. but I can't really remember what it was. What was that? I'm pretty sure that's on Prime. Okay. I could be wrong, though. So what's the story with Dr. Sleep? Well, it's it's a sequel to The Shining. Oh, oh. Um, the Shining scarred me as a child. Yeah. I would, um, I would not go cool into the woods. It, it, <laughs> For some reason, I wouldn't <laughs> go into the woods around my house because of Maybe the because of the hedge maze? I have no idea. I, I, I mean, I live in East Texas, uh, outside of Houston, <laughs> and it's like pine woods. It's not, it's not even like yeah. hedge maze. It's like... It's like pine trees everywhere. And uh, my elementary school was right on the edge of the woods of undeveloped uh, housing neighborhood. And uh, for the longest time, you know, there was like a, the main road that went up to the school was a dead end. And then there was a dirt trail behind the school that went to another road that went back up to my house. And we could like take that dirt road, and go back to the house. 
if we wanted to, or we could just take the main road. The dirt road back to the house was about half the distance. And I was like, I'm not going through those woods. That's where the shining guy is. <laughs> the shining guy is what I called him. Uh, ah. <laughs> and God, I must have been eight. Jeez, it was forever ago. But yeah, I wasn't going to watch. I, yeah, that, that scarred me. It was, and I've seen yeah. that. I saw, I would not watch that movie again. I watched it probably when I was eight. I didn't watch it again until I was at least 20. Oh, wow. Because I was in college. I read the book and I watched the movie. I'm like, I don't. That was a completely irrational, like it had, my fear of the woods had no connection whatsoever to the movie or the book. None. <laughs> Child brain rationalized yeah, it. Was, it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It was <laughs> completely bizarre. Uh, but okay, yeah. Dr. Sleep is the sequel, the sequel to The Shining. Yes. Or, and it, it's directed by Mike Flanagan, mm -hmm. who I feel like is one of the, the best new horror directors out there right now. Okay. Um. I mean, he's done Dr. Sleep. He did Hush. He also did another King adaptation, Gerald's Game. Oh, that's a good um, that was Oculus. A good book. He did. Huh? What was that? That was a good book, Gerald's Game one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I like that's a book that shouldn't have worked as a movie, but the movie is fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, but so do, what he did, such he did an amazing job with Dr. Sleep because Stephen King has been very open about the fact that he did not like the Shining movie. Really? Okay. Um, yeah, because it was not. It wasn't his vision. I haven't read the book yet, mm -hmm. but it wasn't what was in his book. Yeah, they weren't um, very close. Um, yeah. They, like the the broad strokes were the same. Hotel, guy goes crazy. But the yeah. book was much more uh, illustrative of the mm -hmm. descent into madness. Yeah. Um, anywho. And <laughs> what Flanagan did such a good job with is that he – like because dr sleep is a book that king wrote too mm -hmm. um but he basically combined elements from the book and the shining the film mm -hmm. to make it like a successful sequel in both senses like a successful adaptation of the dr sleep book while also like connecting it to the film that people have known for decades now um, and King actually said that watching Dr. Sleep actually warmed him to The okay. Shining movie. So he triangulated um, the the two stories, yeah. or the, I guess the three and stories together into a good movie. That's yeah, cool. and it's so good. It's it's uh, It follows Danny. Like, we get a little bit of catch up, and then it's him as an adult, played by Ewan McGregor, who's mm -hmm. a fantastic actor. Um, and he encounters a little girl who also has the shining mm -hmm. um but there are these bad people that are after them and it's just it's so beautifully done and it's the the it has definitely flanagan has a very distinct look to his films mm -hmm. that i love um and it's so it's visually cool and like things that shouldn't like if you think about them like if the way they were written probably shouldn't have worked on film but he made it work and it's so good yeah um, see well, and rebecca ferguson plays the villain and she's oh love her <laughs> what i love so much about listening to movie people talk about movies uh see I'm, I'm one of the movie people that watches a movie and i'm like that's a great movie and i won't remember the name of the movie and i won't remember the actor's name but i'll be like that was the actor who was in that 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 blockbuster commercial um because I'll, I'll recognize the actor from other stuff that he's done or like isn't it cool how the how the uh the principal of that high school grew up to become president of the United States. That's awesome. Because, uh, you know, those are the two movies I remember from. I don't remember the, the, the I'll remember maybe the, uh, if it was a big production house, I'll remember who the production house was, but I won't remember the director or any of that stuff. Sometimes mm -hmm. I'll put two and two together eventually. Uh, but to listen to y'all movie guys, the movie people who watch this stuff and follow this stuff, talk about the directors and other stuff that the directors have done and the way that these directors have a voice and an image and a, and, and a, a, a style that they follow. Um, and I, and I can do it for some like, uh, 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 Taika Waititi and, uh, mm -hmm. uh, God, the, the, the Transformers guy who does all the explosions, um, whose name I'm forgetting. James Cameron. Uh, no, that was, uh, not that Transformers guy. The other Transformers guy who does the explosions. <laughs> um, Oh my God, Michael Bay. Michael Sorry, Bay. I don't yeah, know why Michael I said Bay James guy. Cameron. The, the, Michael the, Bay the is what guy. I. Uh, the Transformers and and you know you can see a Michael Bay film, you know a Michael Bay film. Yeah. Um, but 
I mean, man, it is so much fun listening listening to y'all talk about the craft, how you recognize the craft and the stuff behind the scenes is really cool because there's a whole lot of stuff that goes, you know, fans of, like me who watch it on the surface and like, this is good. Learning and understanding why it's good is a whole nother level to the entertainment that makes it, it, it makes it fun to, to, to listen to y'all talk about it. And that's why, one of the reasons why I love listening to, to, to good film critics and good film reviewers because y'all can pick apart the pieces of it and put them back together as mm -hmm. to why part A, part B, and part C come together and work. I can do shadow puppets. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> These are the things that distract me. Look at that. I've got a puppy. <laughs> Sorry. That is pretty good too. <laughs> <laughs> but that just distracts from my entire point. But y'all are good at what you do, and it's fun to listen to it. And it's one of the one of the reasons why I like why I think movie reviews and good movie reviews lend itself well to uh, this type of format because we can talk about this stuff, and you don't necessarily even have to watch the movie to know what you're talking about because uh, mm -hmm. you can weave together the visual cues and uh, uh, the way that this movie, this movie, and this movie combine to make the story all together. Uh, you can, you can weave that together without necessarily even having to sit and watch the actual movie. Yeah. Um, and it's something that I think is really important with film criticism that isn't done enough, especially with bigger publications. Mm -hmm. um, they, there needs to be more of a focus on finding the right film critic for the, the subgenre of film that's sure. being talked about. Because I, for example, since we were just talking about uh, Mike Flanagan, Haunting of Bly Manor, um, the, the new Netflix show, which he didn't, ha he also did Haunting of Hill House. He wasn't as involved with Bly Manor, but he still like produced it and stuff. Um, now, real quick, I can't remember. Real quick, what was Haunting of Bly Manor? I've, I've, uh, I've, that's I've, the, I've, a I've Netflix show. That. I've seen that thumbnail. Yeah, that's that's the newest show by by Flanagan on Netflix. Okay. Well, I'm not sure um, if I've seen the movie know. yet, but I'm I know I've seen the 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 thumbnail in like new releases. Yeah. It's something. I mean it's amazing. Okay. But I can't remember the publication, but there was a publication where I I saw the article making the rounds in the horror film community because the first paragraph of this review from this big publication is this person basically shitting all over horror and Halloween and stuff and saying like, oh, I'm not a horror fan. I think Halloween's a dumb holiday, but I'm going to review this show that's a horror show. It's like, why would you have them do it? It makes no sense. <laughs> I hate like, pecans. Let me tell you about this pecan pie. Yeah, like I, I don't like, like typically I'm not a fan of war movies. You're not like, unless it's a horror war movie, like Overlord, mm -hmm. you're not going to see me writing a review for it because that's not my genre. Yeah. I don't like them typically. Like there are exceptions, but generally not my thing. Um, <laughs> it's like me so, writing but, a review for any Hallmark movie. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, there was a lady and she got tired <laughs> of her job and she moved to a small town. And it snowed, and there was a dog, and her old high school boyfriend, and they kissed. Yep, the end. sounds about right. <laughs> it was great. Four Kleenexes I, out of five. And it's, I feel like <laughs> horror, like, is generally looked down upon as a genre in general. And I feel like that's why some of these big publications don't have people like myself or not even me. Like I, like, I don't give a shit if I'm going to write for a big publication. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I've come to terms with that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why do you think but they look down people, upon? Why do you think they look down on horror? Um, I think people just, I mean, this is true for some horror films, but mm -hmm. I think people just look at it as like splatter and gore and no substance. Yeah. But that's, I mean, for most horror films, that's not the case. Horror generally is, the horror films that themselves are generally a metaphor for whatever social issue is going on in the world at that mm -hmm. time. Uh, like the original Black Christmas, people like when the new Black Christmas came out, people got mad because they were like, why are you putting politics in in this horror film when it wasn't in the original? When the original has an entire subplot about how this girl 
finds out she's pregnant, wants to get an abortion, and her boyfriend is trying to force her to have the baby. Well, that's like, not political at all. Like, and that was in the seventies. <laughs> like, <laughs> and you're telling me it doesn't have it. And so it's, I feel like people only look at horror films on the surface and mm-hmm. don't take into account the deeper meaning. Like but they then don't then get past I, the. I'm uh, talking more with my hands because I've had alcohol. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> But, but yeah, yeah, I, I think so, you may be right. They don't get past the blood gore. It's the same way with sci-fi, yeah. where I explain I've explained this to my son several times that science fiction takes one aspect of current society and puts it into a new scenario sometime in the future and yeah. and focuses on that one aspect, whether it's mm-hmm. uh human rights through uh AI uh sentience or whether it's uh, equality through uh, encountering aliens or whether it's just uh, the disruptiveness of technology, uh, which could yeah. be done either in the future or in the past, uh, or any number of other things. Usually it's a social issue like uh, like, like uh, equality or uh, uh, human rights or gender rights or something along those lines. But it, it could be all it could be all kinds of stuff, and they take it out of this context and put it over this context mm-hmm. so that they can shine a light on it because all the other stuff doesn't matter. Uh, yeah. And and they I mean they do the same thing with horror movies where they and the better horror movies do the same thing. I mean some of them are just legit like let's just find an excuse to put a chainsaw on somebody that night. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Which I mean I love those too. They they can be super fun. Oh right. But. And, that- and, they do that with all kinds of movies, not just yeah. horror movies. They do all kinds of dumb reasons. Like, let's just find a reason for her to take off her shirt. And make a movie yeah. Like let's, <laughs> don't care. Uh, <laughs> let's write an entire movie where we can we can put basically 45 minutes on either side of Megan Fox running. Can we do that? Uh, give her this yeah. t-shirt. And then, you know, you have Transformers. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Michael Bay. Appreciate that. Um, <laughs> Which I will say, I like. I've never been a Michael Bay fan, but he produced a, a remake slash sequel of Friday the Thirteenth. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that was around two thousand nine too. It was around that time. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's t- it's. I don't want to say it's terrible. It's it's on, the later the, Friday the really, 13th movies are kind of terrible. I mean, I, I love Jason X, the one in space. I, it cracks me up. I love it. <laughs> but this one, it has, like, there's a gratuitous explosion, which mm-hmm. is very common for Bay films. Mm-hmm. Um, but one of my favorite parts, the, the writers of this film also wrote the Freddy vs. Jason movie, um, which I also have a soft spot for. But <laughs> there's the part where this guy is having sex with a girl and she takes her shirt off and he sees her boobs for the first time and he goes your tits are stupendous <laughs> and i'm just like who uses that that's, word <laughs> that that's that, i mean that's a line that of course would be used anytime with any yeah. guy in that particular situation yeah. that's not i i think that's not i think he even goes on i think he even goes on to say you have perfect nipple placement oh great it's not on your <laughs> shoulder and it's I love that movie because of lines like that because they're just so ridiculous that it it makes whatever you're watching hilarious. Yeah. I love it. And there are definitely movies that I've seen that you can pick out like a scene from the movie and say this is why they made this movie. This entire movie yeah. is stupid, but they did this entire thing for this car chase or for for this this jump over the fountain or whatever dumb trick that they yeah. had to do. Like this entire movie was building up to that point. And now we have another 20 minutes and we have to sit through the rest of this crap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, Oh, the, uh, the Avengers franchise, that last mm-hmm. scene, that last, not the last scene, but that last battle scene where everybody like shows up through the portals and they're about to fight Thanos. And, and, you know, he finally says Avengers assemble, uh, assemble. Avengers assemble. And you're watching it going, they've just spent 20 years for this scene this is yep. the scene that they've spent 20 years working on they finally did it uh, i don't think i don't think they just i don't think they started with that one in mind but that was i mean you could see that that was like that they spend more time on that than probably the rest of that movie <laughs> yeah oh for sure yeah and it's funny i 
I don't want to make. I would definitely like to see the Avengers people on the mad. <laughs> <laughs> I I've heard an argument that says that uh, X Men Days of Future Past achieved what all the Avengers films tried to do in one film, hmm. and they're not wrong. <laughs> Not wrong. Like I, yeah. I like the the MCU, but I mean, my two favorites are the Taika Waititi one, um, Thor Ragnarok. Uh, yes, mm -hmm. that one and Black Panther are my two favorites. Yeah, like I, I could take or leave the rest of them. Yeah, we in the early in the early part of the apocalypse, we rewatched the entire MCU series. Uh, God, seems like a hundred years ago when we did that, man. Uh, and, then, and then the apocalypse kept going. The apocalypse didn't realize yeah. that we ran out of movies. It just never ended. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We called the operator of the apocalypse and we're like, dude, we're done. We're, we're done with movies. We need to. Uh, uh, and they're like, did you watch all of the Nightmare on Elm Street? So I'm like, oh, shit. There's like 80 of those, right? <laughs> I mean, there are a lot. Yeah. I, and they're all delightful. I love all of them for different reasons. They're all something. They are. They're something. And they're dated. They're, oh my God, so dated. But uh, they, they're they dated in their references, but they still hold up. I mean, the first one was clearly yeah. the best, but after that it was, yeah. Like, you could have just ended this, but no, you had to make it for a sequel. Yeah. Now it's a sequel. Damn it. What's funny is I think Freddy versus Jason, <laughs> even though it's the most recent, I feel like that one is the most dated feeling. Really? And I don't know if it's because I lived during that time. Oh, did, did they have a whole but bunch of like, callbacks to the earlier, earlier season, earlier series? Is, is? I mean, not really, okay. but it's just Freddy versus Jason, just like the, the clothes, the hair, like for some reason that all feels so much more dated to me. Okay. And again, I don't know if it's because like I experienced those fashions and stuff. So it's a little different than like, even though I grew up on the first one, like I, I don't think I was alive when the first one came out. I can't remember what year it came out. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> but like, God it's, damn it's these different. Days don't you know? understand what it was like to have to write paper and with pencils. <laughs> hey, I used to have to do that. <laughs> the only thing that was on the computers when I was in school was Oregon Trail. Oh, goodness. And number munchers. <laughs> That was it. Godly. I still remember dial up. Yeah. Yeah. That was a good time. That was some <laughs> good time. Woo. Explaining to my dad as a teenager that we needed to get the internet so that we would have access to all of the world's libraries of information all at the same time. It would help us be better at school. And, and you know, thinking in the back of my head and Playboy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That sounds about right. Like, dad. We can we can write papers with the internet. It gives us a chance to 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 do research and stuff, and play games, and porn. <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord, God, the eighties were a weird time. Yeah. yeah, good times, good times. The eighties. Wait, when did we? Yeah. Get, it was AOL discs back in like late eighties. That's it's got to have been when it was. It's yeah. got to have been the late eighties, which it would have put me at. Yeah, right in the middle of my teenage years. So, yeah. Yeah. And we were able to play. What kind of games could we play on AOL? It was. I was mostly reading. It was access to news articles. There was a bunch of that. But yeah, I can't even remember the games that were available on AOL. Like Robot Wars and stuff like that. That was just like. Bad graphic stuff. Yeah. I can't remember what this game was, but I distinctly remember a game. It was super like pixelated, like obviously of the times, <laughs> but you're like going through a maze of like the walls were concrete and stuff. And I feel like you're either fighting Nazis or demons or both. Frankenstein. Was that what no, it was? No, not Frankenstein. Uh, oh, Jesus. Yeah. Uh, uh, Castle Wolfenstein. It was Castle Wolfenstein. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that, that, that sounds yeah, right. Yeah, we had that one. That was that was also available through the AOLs. Uh, and you would go and you'd pick up the the guns and and work your way through the mazes and do all the stuff. Yeah, Castle Wolfenstein. Yeah. That was some good stuff. That's some mm -hmm. that's some good late 80s early 90s pop culture up there. Good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you got to sneak those in as often as possible. <laughs> 
good stuff. Like I, it's so funny. So I recently have become active because of COVID. Mm-hmm. I've become active on TikTok, and I hate that I'm this person now. Um, because I feel so old. On no TikTok. nuance, November. I know that that's my favorite thing so far, though, um, especially because of the people I'm making mad with my no nuance November takes. Um, but there's there's this one video that's gone kind of viral on TikTok um, because it's a girl saying, oh, the old people on here, like the people born in the early 2000s, late 90s. And I'm just like, <clears throat> bitch. so I'm a dinosaur <laughs> is what you're telling me. <laughs> Man. Okay, I'm glad I know where I stand yeah. here now. Thanks. <laughs> wow. Yeah. 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 I remember the all first those time, young people. The first time one of my kids said that that his teacher wasn't old like me. She was probably in her 40s, and I was like, "You little shit." <laughs> <sighs> she's she's probably in her 40s, like Nana. Like. Hmm. <laughs> Wow. Nana's older than I am. That's how she got to be Nana. <laughs> like, she, she's a little bastard. Go I will room. say <laughs> the one benefit, like I, I for for a year, I worked at a high school. Um, like last last year, mm-hmm. I worked at a high school for only for a year though. It feels like um, forever ago. And, <laughs> yeah, it does. Last decade. But I, uh, <laughs> I look younger than I am. And I just remember one of the kids randomly asked me how old I was there and they guessed and they were off by like seven <laughs> or eight years or something like that. They refused, absolutely refused to believe that I was born in the eighties. Would Could not believe it. <laughs> and I even, I, cause I worked at the alternative high school. Oh. So I would have to go to the, the regular high school sometimes. Gotcha. And I went there once to go meet with someone who knew I was coming to meet them. So I'm waiting for them in their office and they're a few minutes late and they come in and they're like, oh, are you here to get your transcript? It's like, no, <laughs> I'm not. I'm here for our scheduled meeting. Thank you very much. <laughs> Cause I fucking work here. <laughs> you dumb idiots, golly. See, when I shave this off, I lose 10 years, easy. See, and uh, after Tuesday, after this show airs, as a matter of fact, I'll be doing, I have one more marketing event and then uh, we're through, uh, I got like a week of, a week of time that I can take off. So I'll, I'll get this off. Ugh, it's, I'm getting tired of it. It's been here for a while. It's time to get rid of the COVID beard. COVID, COVID beard? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that'll come. That'll come. Back to the movies. <laughs> that was a fun little diversion. What new types of tropes, uh, what new types of, with the new with the new producers and the new directors and the new writers coming into the field that are like an entirely new breed, an entirely new set of voices coming into the uh, uh, horror movie genre, like, you know, Get Out was a great example of a brand new voice, a brand new story, a brand new mm-hmm. construction of a story. Uh, what kind of new themes are you seeing in these movies? New like fresh eyes on the problem of thriller horror genre stuff. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if there's necessarily, I mean, aside from the trope that I mentioned earlier about people like we're not in a horror film. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> I feel count. like there, there are so many new voices that they're, they're just bringing like some of my favorite new directors um, like Mike Flanagan, absolutely everything he has done I have loved Mm -hmm. like he's fantastic um has I I recently just watched the only film that I hadn't watched from his earlier filmography and I was like nope he's perfect everything he touches (laughs) I love um and same with like Guillermo del Toro Mm -hmm. who did Pan's Labyrinth and Hellboy and said that but the earlier Hellboy is not the new one he also did Pacific Rim I love Pacific Rim. He did the first one, not the second one. Yeah, I didn't like the first one either. <laughs> oh, I well, actually, and I've had, I think I fell asleep during part of it. Like, like I, I watched a movie review about Pacific Rim that makes me want to watch mm-hmm. Pacific Rim again with fresh eyes as a love yeah. story to this kaiju genre. But the first yeah. time I watched it, I'm like, this doesn't make any sense. This is dumb. This yeah. is breaking my logic circuits. I can't accept this. 
I actually need to rewatch <laughs> that one again because I think I fell asleep when I watched that one because I watched it at home. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but like every, everything I've seen, like his blade, he did blade two, mm. is the best blade. Like I, I love the first one, but the second blade is like mm. beautiful. Um, Pan's Labyrinth, um, Shape of Water won a fucking Oscar. Like, it's amazing. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that on the show. Nobody's watching. It's fine. Okay. Um, <laughs> Every time I, I swear that, a I lot. get a comment down in the, the, like, we're watching. Like, fine, mom. Uh, <laughs> and even, like, his one of his earlier ones that he doesn't like, but I still love, he did Mimic. I okay. love Mimic. Love that movie. So what, what makes um, a good horror movie to you? What to you I mean, makes a good horror? Because I'll tell you what makes a good horror movie to me. What makes a good horror movie for me is it, it's it's the unknown. It's that it, it's that it, you know it's not the monster slasher type of thing. It's that it's the it's the risk. It's the unknown. It's the uh, it's the being trapped in a situation that you inadvertently created for yourself. Uh, mm-hmm. The most recent one that I've seen that was a it was it was kind of dumb, but it was also pretty good. It was Keanu Reeves' movie Knock Knock, uh, where it was the dude. He was he was out of his his wife had gone off to a conference with their kids, and these two little co-eds show up at the door. They're wet, they're drenched, they're looking for a party. They 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 come to the wrong house, and he's like, "Okay, you can come in," and then they don't leave. And they trash the house and they destroy his life and blah, 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 blah. Uh, yeah. White guy horror story. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> because now he looks like the dirt bag because he's cheating on his wife and all that stuff. But he's, you know, out of, and he did kind of, you know, fuck them both. But, yeah. you know, that's part of the story. That didn't have to be in the, <laughs> that didn't have to be in the story, but they put it in the story as kind of a gratuitous sex scene. Uh, but even without that, it would have been a great story because like these two, like college co-ed or, they, they they claim to be underage, but they were college co-ed chicks who just wouldn't leave. And what do you do? Out of the goodness of your own heart, you bring them in and like, okay, here's your Uber. Here's your clean clothes. Now get the hell out. They're like, no, I think we're going to stay. And, you know. Yeah. We're going to stay. I think. And take off my shirt and take a picture of my boobs and put it on your social media. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I feel like that. What's interesting is I feel like that film is like every white married man's worst nightmare <laughs> it, that looks like, like what i said yeah it's like a white yeah, guy horror film it, it really is it, it plays and right it's... to the insecurities of of well-meaning yeah middle class or upper middle class white guys who just we just want to do okay we just want to yeah. do right and then there's people somebody's going to take advantage of that or, and it is one of those situations like what are you going to do forcibly remove them for your ha- from your house because then they could call the cops on right, you you're the one that right yeah. Or and and it's the same type of the same type of trope like do you stop to help the person on the side of the road who's got a yeah. a busted tire and now they've stolen your car or you know it happens in uh uh the post apocalyptic movies how it happened in uh, mm-hmm. zombie land you know they stop to help the yeah uh the girls at the supermarket and then they take the guns and take his car and you know it it's a yeah. it's a recurring but couched in a horror movie uh, that sort of thing, you know, it's, it, and it's this, it, it's similar to what happens in Get Out where he just goes to see his girlfriend's family and now he's stuck in a situation, not of his making, but he can't get out of it yeah. without being a horrible person. Uh, yeah. you know, those, the, the trope that plays on the kindness and goodness of the person, that's, that's what makes a good horror story to me. Uh, yeah. and it's, it's that psychological thing that just. You know, you're just being a normal, good person, and it's the evil of the world that's fighting you. What makes a good one to you? I feel like there's a lot of different factors for me that go into a good horror. Um, Obviously, just having, like, a really compelling, unique story is a big part of it. Um, I'm also really big on character development. Mm -hmm. Even if the characters are flawed, I want to care about what happens to them. Um doesn't mean they have to be perfect they don't like they can be very very flawed but i want to still care about them (laughs) um i also think with horror effects are really important whether they're practical or cgi like they they need to be well done because there are some movies that 
they have the great story, they have really good performances from the actors, but then the effects are just so ter- yeah. terrible. Poorly and done it, effects it takes can take you, you right out, out of the, of the moment. Yeah. 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 Um, and, so that's a big one so for me the, too. So stuff that makes them bad movies, you know, bad acting, bad writing, bad effects yeah. that can take you right out of the moment. Because that's mm-hmm. a, that's one part. You're, I, you're right. You got to be in there. Horror movies ask you to suspend disbelief to mm-hmm. a very large extent, uh, more yes. so than other movies, I think, because they're putting you this in this place where you have to be emotionally involved. And it's really hard to watch a horror movie in the background while you're doing something else, because yeah. you've got to be emotionally involved in this picture, in this space. Uh, and all that stuff will take you out of it. What puts you into it? I mean, definitely, I I like feeling like it's a different, almost, I don't want to say feeling like it's a different world because I, I have Guillermo del Toro on the brain now. Mm-hmm. So with his films, you really are basically being transported into a different world. Sure. Um, but I, I just feel like I... It varies so much from sub, like even with subgenres, because like if we're talking like ghost stuff, mm-hmm. like that scares me the most. So for me, like having a good story and stuff, but also like having really subtle things happening. Yeah. Like I don't, I don't necessarily for ghost movies, I don't necessarily want a ton of big scares. I want subtle things. Like I want at the, in the corner of your eye for you to see a doll move or something like that. You know what I mean? Like something subtle like that, that, sure. that does it for me more than the big jump scares. And you but know, then the Poltergeist I also... movies have all the same stuff. Not, yeah. not, not Poltergeist, the franchise, but like the, the demon infestation movies, like yeah. uh, Paranormal Activity, for ex- as an yeah. example. There's all Love. the same tropes where they walk out of the room, come back in the room and all the doors and cabinets are open. They mm-hmm. walk out of the room, come back in the room and all the furniture's on the ceiling. They walk out of the room, come back yeah. in the room and, you know, whatever, all, all the knives. Yeah, are like I, up. those movies get a lot of shit just because they're found footage. But I think at least the first three and then Paranormal Activity, the, the marked ones, mm. I think those four films in the franchise are so well done. Yeah. And they scare the crap out of me every time I watch them. Oh, sure, yeah. Like, I, I, I especially fail. like the first one. I wasn't so big on the second two. I, I like the Blair Witch Project when it first came out. Yeah, but, oh. Like, like Blair Witch is probably one of the scariest movies I've ever seen. But that's and another always. one of those. That was that was so well done. We, you know, even when you know that it's fake and staged, when mm-hmm. we watched it the first time, we didn't because they had done such a good job with that movie and the marketing of that movie, yeah. and it was the first one of its type. Uh, and everybody's like, "Did that really happen?" There's a website. Like, yeah. yeah, the movie studio created all that. Wasn't stuff. there even like a special on MTV about yes. it? Like the story yeah. behind the real story of the Blair Witch. See, movies like that, that's what that's my jam with these types of movies because it's just normal. Like, we're going to go check this thing out. And then mm-hmm. all the shit just goes wrong. Like, you stepped yeah. in it and now you're fucked. Like, you're yeah. in this thing. This is just normal human behavior. We're just going to go check this thing out. It's a lark, whatever. And then, like, the circumstance draws you in and you're hooked. Uh, uh, same thing, paranormal activity, like movies like that, or even Poltergeist, where you show up and this is a normal reaction to, like, what's that thing going on over there? And you go, like, poke at it and flick at the corner of the uh, of the of the paper and you pull at it and then next thing you know, like, you're, you know, pulling down the whole, uh, uh, the whole story's unraveling in front of you as you're, as you're pulling the, wallpaper off the walls or whatever uh you know normal human reaction to a normal human thing to see Mm -hmm. um and yeah it's easy to get taken out of those because yeah you know bad acting or bad writing or just you know dumbness uh can take you out but you know you're you're, i'm gonna ask you again what is it (laughs) what like if you could if you could pick something one thing is, is it it's the is it the subtlety of the horror movie that does it for you or, or is it is it a horror movie that it doesn't do it for you if it's too over the top or or you know it, it takes you out of this world puts you into a new world what is it that what is it if i were if i were to design a movie for Molly, mm-hmm. 
Like I'm gonna <laughs> okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna release this movie in three days. I'm gonna design it from scratch to play speak to you. What is that movie? I mean, if we're talking solely about not necessarily how much it scares me, but just something that will make me absolutely love a film. Mm -hmm. I would probably say a film that is written in a way that has some kind of deeper meaning going on than what's on the surface. Ah, uh, yeah, that makes sense. Like, I mean, I this this film is kind of divided on people who like it or not, but like It Follows is an example that most people are familiar with where the the entire film is basically a combination metaphor for for like a walking std um but also the it, it's a metaphor for the trope in horror films that sex equals death mm -hmm. like for the, for gen for years like in the 70s all through the 90s like in horror films if you had sex that means you were going to die mm -hmm. <laughs> like it was guaranteed right so that's a good example of something like that um and it follows is the one where you delay, like the goat, the the spirit is following you, but every mm -hmm. time you have sex, it slows down. Yeah, because yes. it goes after that person first. Right. You, it goes after the most recently you traded infected. off your sex partner. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Which that has a whole other layer of messed upness to it, <laughs> like <laughs> that you're willing to pass this off, knowing what's going to come to those people. All right. Yeah. But it's, I mean, films like that where there, there's more so going on than meets the if eye. You, if you get in like an orgy, does it confuse the ghost? Does it not know who Probably to go not. After? I'm, sh I'm sure it can figure out. Or does who it was just first. go after the whole group one by one, like a uh, Final Destination? Probably one by one <laughs> in the order. And it's, it's smart like Final Destination because it, I'm sure it can figure out who was the first yeah. one. So I guess yeah. you'd have to call a whole bunch of people to like a Jeremy Epstein Island or Jeffrey yeah, Epstein I mean, Island, it, and then send them yeah. all to all corners of the world. And then yeah. you're good for a few years. Yeah. But it has to be Probably. grown ups, a bunch of pervs. Make it grown ups, not kids, yes. not that Jeffrey Epstein, the other Jeffrey yes. Epstein that does the grown up <laughs> stuff. God, you're gross. God, internet, <laughs> quit it. <laughs> Anywho, well, I just took that right off the rails. That train's going <laughs> down, the, down the cliff, tumbling. Gonna hit the rocks in a minute, crash. Good train, good train. <laughs> Okay, so the movie has a deeper meaning. It has extra levels and extra layers. That makes yeah. sense. I mean, that that makes for a good genre type of movie mm -hmm. that it's not just this surface air layer dumbness. And some of the best ones, The Hills Have Eyes, uh, the, the, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the, uh, uh, you know, the, the icons of the, of, the, of the genre that go back, you know, into history uh, as far back as you want to go, they all have different, different layers and different meanings on top of and below uh just the basic i mean the the movie's a metaphor and where the yeah. movie isn't a metaphor uh it's clearly uh it's it, i mean it, it's clearly subpar and you can see through the the thinness of the writing and the thinness of the acting where yeah. they just put these people in a cabin for no damn reason like why yeah why this one why this you know Whatever they just pissed off the the yokels at the at the uh, country store there for no good reason, and now now we have to sit through a movie. Damn it! The only movie that that works is Cabin in the Woods because that's the whole point of it. Oh, right, exactly, and that and that's the whole point of the movie. It, it has its own subplot yeah. of putting this them in this. Now Tucker and Dale versus Evil was pretty good. That, oh my god, that I love that movie. <laughs> But that's so not, good. That's not exactly a horror movie. That's a comedy movie. But it. I I count that. But I it, count because the it fits horror the, comedy is a subgenre. It fits the genre of movies where it's just a couple of guys doing good, or they mm -hmm. think they're doing good, no fault of their own. These crazy damn kids. They just start jumping in the wood chipper. <laughs> yep. Those damn kids. It's always their fault. I don't know. I don't know what he was doing. He just dove into the wood chipper. <laughs> I mean, I also, I, one of the I don't know how to say movie. his last name, but I love him. Alan I, I Trudyke, feel... which is, I'm not sure is how, that how you say it, either, it, but he is a great actor. Okay. Just we'll pretend that's Wash, right. It's but... fine. Yeah, there you go. I love him. It's great that he like, grew up but... from being a spaceship pilot to, uh, you know, just a backwoods yokel who just wants to enjoy himself. <laughs> Did you ever see the, not the American remake, but the British Death at a Funeral? I have not. 
He's in that. Mm -hmm. um, I don't go out and do things and see stuff and anything. Well, this one's never. old. I think this I one was... <laughs> it's from a while ago, but it's because there's the there's the American remake that has like Chris Rock and stuff in it. Mm -hmm. But there's the original British one that has um, that guy's in it. Peter Dinklage is in it. Um, some other people that I'm blanking on because I've had a drink or two. Um, <laughs> you remember movies like I do. <laughs> after you've it's had so a drink. funny though. It is honestly one of my favorite comedies. It's because it's very, it's a very British comedy, mm -hmm. but that he specifically, he plays a guy that is very, everyone's going to a funeral and he's very anxious about it because the family doesn't like him. He's like, dating a girl who's movie. related to them so he takes what he thinks is a valium and then finds out that it is most definitely not a valium mm -hmm. it is an illegal drug <laughs> <laughs> um and he took too many of them of course. and it's just like he like he gets into these really funny antics in the film and he's not the main character but he's definitely the best part I of it i may have seen that movie i may have it's the it's american hilarious. one probably not the british remake but yeah i mean i think the familiar. american one I think the American one is exactly the same. Like it even has Peter Dinklage in it. Mm -hmm. It's just different families. Gotcha. But um, I haven't seen the I haven't seen the American remake yeah, though. I can't. I can't. It sounds familiar, but I may not have seen it. I don't know. Well, but I'll, 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 I'll check it out. I'll look it up. That sounds fun. <laughs> uh, this is the part of the show that I hate the most. See, I told you it would. I would say this, and it would seem sooner than it needed to be. And I actually extended it out about ten more minutes because we had the audio problems and the internet oh, yeah. problems before. But this is the part of the show that I hate the most. We're done. It's been our hour. It's time to say goodbye. Um, <laughs> tell everybody where they can find your uh, wonderful writing and personality in all the places. Um, I'm taking a small break, but my website is thebloggingbanshee.com. Thebloggingbanshee.com. Um, yes. You Don't can look find up me Blogging Banshee. That's not a thing. <laughs> well, on Twitter, I'm at Blogging Banshee. Yes. And on Instagram, I'm at Blogging.Banshee. Right. To make right. it confusing. But that'll all be down um, there. And you have a link tree that I yeah. can uh, link down yes. there and everybody can find it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that'll have links to all my socials. And then obviously, like, I, since I have writing that are, that's added a bunch of different places, that'll have links to all that cool. shit. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, you can be found all over the YouTubes. All they got to do is, all you have to do is Google, not Google it, do the search for her name. It's down there in the, I don't know if they can see your name down there, Molly, H-E-N-E-R-Y. <laughs> yes. um, hit that into the search bar on the YouTubes and you can find the, the script reads and movie reviews and all kinds of stuff you do in collaborate, collaboration, God, words, uh, collaboration with other folks through the YouTubes. Uh, you're prolific. You're out there. You're all over the place. And um, uh, there's a there's a, there's a whole lot. You can see a whole lot more of her her uh, doing stuff on the on the webs, doing the the script reads and doing the movie reviews and all the stuff. She's a she's a ton of fun, uh, which is why I wanted to get you on the show. And I appreciate you saying yes and joining me and having a drink with me. <laughs> uh, because this yes, has this been fun. fun. And I appreciate you being <laughs> patient through the uh, technical difficulties when I got the kids kicked off the Fortnite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah because that always helps that seems to be what the problem was they were using too much of my gas uh through the <laughs> tubes of the interwebs causing it to run slowly uh or however the internets work i don't know um but as for us you can find our whiskey in spec stores across the state of texas and hopefully coming to a state near you soon so that's that uh anything else you want to add um I don't think so. Yeah, it sounds like a I, I I have vodka brain, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, fabulous. Fabulous. All right. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fade out from us. I'm going to tell everybody good night. Good night, everybody. Uh, oh, stay tuned for the uh, after show. I'll probably do a, a late night with Old Humble tonight. Uh, if I'm not doing a late night with Old Humble tonight, then you won't see me in about 30 minutes. If I am doing a late night with Old Humble tonight, you will see me in about 30 minutes. So there you go. There's that. Um. Sometimes I do this uh, an after show uh, where I Got come it. back on and I'm live and I chat with the people in the chat because if this is live premiered, they won't be able to chat with me, but I can do the live premiere and talk about what we just talked about, which is kind of fun. Uh, and sometimes I'll play Among Us or some other dumb thing. <laughs> I love Among Us. So that's it's fun. <laughs> it's insane. So watch my Twitter feed. That's where I usually put the uh, Among Us code. 
uh, when I'm on. Um, and I've, I actually had one person when I was playing late night, got joined me on the stream and then followed me around the uh, ship the entire time. <laughs> so I had my own little stream sniper. It was cute. Nice. Uh, <laughs> But that's enough of the silliness. Uh, Molly, thank you uh, again for coming on the show. I really do appreciate it. We're going to fade away. Everybody, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, children of all ages, thank you for joining us on the show. Cheers to all of you and you especially, Molly. Good night. Thank you for having me. <laughs>